Hello everyone, Physicus here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will cover the usage of the AGM-88 High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile ARM, in the position known or POS mode. You can use this mode with or without the ANASQ-213HTS pod equipped in the aircraft. The purpose that the POS mode serves, which we will go into during the tutorial, is unique to it and very useful. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about this weapon and its associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to use this weapon effectively. Let's get into it. Preparation Since the POS mode is best employed against enemy air defenses we suspect or know the location of beforehand, it's a good method to have their positions marked with pre-planned threat steer points which we can do using the 2D map like I demonstrated in my previous video, linked in the description and in the info card on the screen. We have an SA-2 and an SA-3 to the north and southwest of the target respectively. I will mark both of them with pre-planned threat steer points, which I will use during the mission as targeting reference. Once you are done marking pre-planned threat steer points, remember to go to data cartridge and hit save. Set up inside the aircraft. Once you're in the aircraft, go to air to ground mode. On the SMS page, power on the harm and then go to the weapon page. In order to go to POS mode, press the first OSB and then select POS. On the following OSB, we have the tables, which we can cycle by pressing the OSB, or if this page is center of interest, we can do that by pressing DMS aft, we can cycle through the tables by pressing TMS left. We can use the next OSB to cycle between the different harm submodes. They are Equation of Motion, EOM, Range Unknown, or UK, or Pre-Brief Mode, PB. Equation of Motion, EOM, is the most restrictive submode. The seeker is activated with a narrow field of view at approximately 8 nautical miles from the anticipated threat position. This mode should only be used when the location of the emitter is well known, i.e. co-located to a steer point. Range Unknown, or UK, is used mainly as defense mode and is a degraded EOM mode with high uncertainty about the threat range. The seeker is activated approximately 30 nautical miles from the steer point, i.e. in most cases at launch, with a wide FOV. Pre-briefed mode, PB, is used for a long-range delivery with high confidence target location. The seeker will activate approximately 13 nautical miles from the steer point with a wider FOV. The next OSB, labeled UFC, allows you to change the threats on the threat tables, as I demonstrated in my previous video. On that video, I also covered the next two OSBs, Geographic Specificity and Target Isolate, so I recommend that you watch it. Along the left side of the MFD, we have the different threats for the threat table that's selected. Pressing one of these will set the radar type the missile will search for once it goes active. Unlike on the HAS mode, you can only pick one of these per missile. Deploying the weapon Once you're getting close to the target area, go to air to ground mode. Check the SMS page that the weapon is powered on and ready, and set one of your MFDs on the weapon page. If you set a pre-planned threat steer point on the 2D map, reference it now as your navigation steer point to be used as SPI. In this case, I marked the SA-2 as steer point 56 and the SA-3 as steer point 57. You can see on the weapon page, 56 now displayed. To add to this, I will select 2T which is the SA-2 tracking radar, and now we see more information. 
you will notice across the weapon page there is a horizontal green line. All the information underneath this line is for weapons still loaded in the aircraft. Anything above this line is for weapons already launched. The information currently under the green line is the following. The threat type the missile will look for, the steer point at which the weapon will be directed, the estimated weapon's time of flight, in this case 2 minutes and 24 seconds, the estimated time on target for the weapon, and the selected station. Additionally, on the SMS page, since I have Table 1 selected for the SA-2 tracking radar, I will select Table 2 to be loaded as tertiary threats which contains the SA-2 search radar. With this configuration, in case that when the missile activates it can't detect the SA-2 tracking radar, it will go after the secondary threats. These are the other threats not selected in Table 1, SA-3, SA-4, SA-5, and SA-10 tracking radars. If it can't detect any of those, it will go after the tertiary threats, which is anything currently inputted in Table 2, search radars. Keep in mind that if you select Range Unknown as the submode, you will not have time of flight or time on target displayed on here since it's a low confidence shot. After you set the threat type, the steer point the missile will go to and the submode, it will take a few seconds for the handoff to be complete and for the symbology to show in the HUD which we will cover for each submode later. In case you're using EOM or PB as your submode and both stations are configured in POS, after the first missile is launched, above the green dividing line, you will see the following information. The missile's remaining time of flight, in this case, 2 minutes and 21 seconds. The steer point it's going to, steer point 56, and the threat type it will look for when it's activated. In this case, the SA-2's tracking radar. Range unknown, RUK. First I will demonstrate an RUK shot. On the HUD, when the handoff is complete, you will see the range bracket, the carrot, and the estimated altitude at which the weapon will launch. Since this shot is a level shot, there is minimal altitude variation. Once the carrot is within the range bracket, press and hold the weapon release button. Since this is a low confidence shot and the exact position of the target is unknown, note that you will not see the time of flight information above the green line with this sub mode. Equation of Motion EOM Since EOM is a shot with more confidence on the threat's location, there will be more information on the HUD once the handoff is complete. The range bracket, the carrot, the estimated altitude at launch, and the offset to the target from your aircraft. In this case, it's currently to my right, 3 degrees. Also, after you shoot, the information about the weapon's remaining time of flight will be displayed on the weapons page. Additionally, using EOM, you can launch the weapon even if you're not facing the target. You can also launch at extreme angles. As you can see, the target is currently to my left, 64 degrees, but I can still shoot from here. However, I don't recommend using this technique with extreme angles, as it's going to drain a lot of energy from the missile, limiting its range. Pre-briefed mode, PB. Lastly, in PB, you will be required to put the aircraft on a climb, sometimes a relatively steep one, before the missile can be launched to help maximize the missile's range. You will see attached to the carrot currently an A9. 
This means that with the current speed, altitude and heading, I will be required to pitch the aircraft up 9 degrees for the missile to be launched. Before pulling up, I recommend going to afterburner, then doing a gentle pull up to the required angle. You will see on the azimuth steering line, two carats. This is the optimal loft angle. Once your flight path marker is within the optimal loft angle, press and hold the weapon release button. And there we have it. POS mode is a very useful tool to use against threats you know the location of. With the additional information that the EOM and PB modes offer, you can better coordinate with your flight and overall package in a multiplayer setting. With the missile's remaining time of flight information, one technique the group I'm with uses, 7-2 Squadron, is to have a harm in a threat area at regular intervals. With this technique, as the strikers enter the threat range, there will be a harm looking for that threat at regular intervals. For example, each 15 seconds a harm is in the area. Keep in mind, that for the harm to be most effective, it requires the radar emission to lock onto. If it doesn't pick one up, it will use its inertial navigation to fly to the target. However, this is not the most accurate guidance method, and because of the harm's relatively small warhead, a near miss might not be enough to destroy a radar that's nearby. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.